Ask your questions now. We want you to be a part of this show, so we wanted to remind our dear viewers to feel free to converse with one another and ask questions in the live stream chat on YouTube. More importantly, if you have a question or comment that you would like our host or guest to answer live, please remember to send us a super chat by clicking on the small dollar icon next to your chat box of any amount, and we will read and answer your comment or question live on this program or on a later program. You can also send us a super thanks located underneath this video by side scrolling the row where the thumbs up, share buttons, and other button options are located. Just keep scrolling until you see the thanks icon. And that's it. It's that simple. So be sure and get your super chat comment or question in during this program. We would love to hear from you and answer your questions live. Thanks so much for your generosity. We have exciting news. GLC is delighted to share that our 501c3 tax exemption status has been officially reinstated. Your donations are now tax deductible, including those made after 2015. Reach out to us at the email address or phone on your screen for more info on receiving a receipt letter. Join us in making a positive impact on the kingdom of God. Consider contributing a tax deductible gift today at www.glctv.tv. Every amount counts. Hi friends, we at GLC would like to take a quick moment to thank you for watching our programs on this platform. And we'd like to ask you for a little favor. Would you please go beneath this video and click the subscribe button? Did you know that by simply subscribing to the GLC YouTube channel, you can help us financially support the programs on this platform? You'll need to be signed into YouTube beforehand. But if not, Simply click the subscribe button and YouTube will automatically walk you through the steps to sign in or to create an account. By taking these simple steps, you will not only ensure that you continue to receive our unique programming and gain instant access to the hundreds of videos we post, but more importantly, you'll also be telling YouTube that GLC's content is worth watching and promoting. Likewise, if you enjoyed a specific program, please click the thumbs up button below, which also helps inform YouTube that this is a program worth recommending. Finally, once you have logged in and subscribed, please click the notification bell below in order to receive announcements when we post new content. As usual, feel free to post your questions and comments in the comments section below. We always love hearing from our friends and viewers. Again, thank you for watching and supporting God's Learning Channel. We couldn't spread the message of the gospel without you. Be blessed, and we hope you enjoy the show. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode here on GLC. Uh, for most of you, you might have been following us on Instagram. You might be following us on YouTube. We've been putting a QR code out. And we're doing something special this year. We want to bring the Passover to you through cable television and through online social media. So uh, our heart is to sh share Yeshua in, in the Passover. And we want you to experience this. Maybe in the past you've, you've wanted to explore what the Jewish feasts look like. Uh, and you wanted to see what, what it would be like to have a Messianic Passover. Um, well, now here's your opportunity. So if there's a Q, we actually have a QR code uh, and we're going to show you that QR code now. And if you take your, your television or you take your phone, um, excuse me, take your phone out, pull out your camera and you can actually scan this QR code now and you can have the Passover Haggadah that we're going to read through tonight at this dinner table. And you can follow along with us. Uh, you can actually take this QR code and you can print it up on your printer, print it up for you and your entire family, and you can follow along. This is a great way to be introduced to what it's like to keep the, the Feast of the Lord, the Moedim, the High Holy Days, and uh, this is exciting for us. Um, again, my name's Eric Espatia. My family and friends are around the table. We're all going to be here, and we're going to share with you what it's like. We're excited, and uh, let's get started. So typically, we actually start off with the, the, the Moedim with the sound of the shofar, and I'm going to do a shofar blast for us. And this really signifies uh, the separation uh, from the, the, the holy and the mundane. We're going to sound, sound the shofar, and 
This evening, we're going to go into what is the High Holy Days, uh, and we're excited to be here with you on this feast. So here we go. Amen. And so if we join us on page two of the Haggadah that you have now, I'm going to say the Shema. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Bauch Shem Chevot Machuto Leolam Bayeh. Hear, O Israel, Adonai or Elohim, Adonai is one, and blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Amen. So I want to explain a little bit about the history of Pesach. So uh, that is the Hebrew word for Passover. You're going to be hearing a couple different terms as we go through this, and maybe some terms that you're not used to. Uh, first, uh, Yeshua. Yeshua is the Hebrew name for Jesus. And we're going to also be hearing Adonai, Hashem. Uh, these are the names, well, in English, we would say Lord and God. So, um, so as we hear these terms, as we go through it, you're going to be able to understand what's going on. But I wanted to just prepare you for some of the, the names that you might hear differently. But uh, Passover is a memorial to God. It is a day in which Adonai and his great deeds are remembered. Passover is a celebration of the del deliverance from slavery, a miraculous story. For at the height of their misery, Adonai delivered the Israelites and a mixed multitude out of Egypt. When they, when they needed him, he provided. We have within this story a promise of hope. Adonai never changes. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he will keep his word to us today, tomorrow, and forever. It's Adonai's feast, and, and it's an appointed time. So in Leviticus 23, verses 1 and 2, it says this, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, The feast of the Lord, which you shall proclaim a holy convocation, even these are my appointed feast. I want to emphasize that this, these feasts, yes, they're traditionally kept by the Jewish people, but these feasts belong to Hashem. They're his feasts, and he says they belong to him. This isn't just a tradition for the Jewish people. This is a tradition for us. And our hope here is that we bring the tradition that I think we lost over time and bring it back into the church, bring it back to the believers, because at the center of it all, it's all about Yeshua. In Exodus 12, 14, it says this, and this day shall be a memorial for you, and you shall celebrate it as a feast unto Adonai, the Lord, throughout all your generations. And you shall celebrate it as an everlasting ordinance forever. Uh, that, that's pretty big, forever. It's an everlasting feast. Even in the millennial kingdom, we will be keeping these feasts. We've heard it even said by Jesus himself. He said, remember, I will not partake of this cup again until I'm with you in the kingdom. It implies that there is Passover. We will be celebrating this exact meal with Yeshua HaMelech, the king in his kingdom, we'll be celebrating it. So why not begin to learn and see the beauty of it today instead of waiting uh, you know, for the millennial kingdom? Let's learn about it and start to learning how to share it. So I'm excited to do this with you. The early church celebrated Passover, and today churches are rediscovering its rich messianic symbolism. And this has been ignored for so long. It was in Rome that we hear of the first Roman church leaders not celebrating the Passover. And this is funny. Bishop Sixtus in 122 AD stopped celebrating it just after what's called the Fiscus Judaicus, the Jewish tax. 
It was extended beyond the Jews and it also applied to those who lived like Jews. This would have included believers, of course, for they kept all the feasts of Adonai and that he commanded. From this turning point, the early church distanced themselves from the Jewish people, especially in Rome. Eventually, at the Council of Nicaea in 321 AD, under the orders of Emperor Constantine, the church declared that anyone who observed the Lord's death and resurrection on Passover was to be excommunicated. And hence, in those early centuries, quit. Christians understood little about the Passover and thus little about the symbolism of the Last Supper. So let us learn again the Passover story that we might love it and that we might see the very essence of the New Testament revelation, the beautiful picture of our Messiah and the Passover lamb. Uh, I, I said this is very interesting. It said Bishop Sixtus, um, he was the one who sort of started us not allowing to keep the Passover, the Jewish tax. Well, my middle name is Sixtus. This is very interesting. Uh, so I felt how, how um, I don't know, how awesome is God? He took a Sixtus to take the Passover away and a, six, a Sixtus to bring it back. We, we, we created a tikkun in the world. So uh, uh, Baruch Hashem, praise God. In 1 Corinthians 5, 7, and 8, it says, Messiah our, Messiah, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. So this is called the Seder, what we're reading. The Hebrew word Seder actually means order. We arrange the table in a certain order following the scriptural account during the Seder service. Therefore, we refer to this custom as the Seder. The Seder plate reminds us of our deliverance from slavery by our deliverer, the Lamb of God. There are bitter herbs. Now, I've got the Seder plate. We have a beautiful shot, uh, one that you can see on the camera with the wine. And we also have one here on our table. This is traditional. And again, this is just sort of like a, a, a way to learn with uh, certain items, right? It's, it's, it's here to teach us, and we're going to walk through each one of these items and what, it, what they mean. So the symbols on the Seder plate remind us of our deliverance from slavery by our deliverer. There are bitter herbs on the plate, and what, we have like some parsley, and what's this called again? Endive the bitter, Endive the bitter herbs. We also have... Um, the sweet apple mixture, it's called haroset, and parsley, and a bone. We have a shank bone. All these are curious items, uh, yet all are telling a certain part of the story. Each item on the Seder plate serves to remind us of the time when the Israelites were set free from their slavery in Egypt. So in Exodus verses 6, our Chapter 6, verse 7, the Lord said to Moses, I am Adonai, and I shall take you out from under the burdens of Egypt. I shall rescue you from their service. I shall redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. I shall take you to me for a people, and I shall be your God, and you shall be my people, and you shall know that I am Adonai, your Elohim. I am the Lord, your God. The next thing it says, the Haggadah. What does that mean? Haggadah. The word Haggadah comes from the word Haggad, which means to say or to tell. This booklet that we have and that you have now, this booklet, um, is, it tells the history of the Passover. We call it the Haggadah or the telling of the story. It says this in Exodus Chapter 13, verse 8, you shall tell your sons of the Exodus. That is our commandment as parents to tell our children. And I'm very blessed to have uh, my twins at this table. It is part of the commandment to, for me as a father to pass this on to you and you to tell it to your children. It's an everlasting commandment that we're supposed to do. So I'm, I'm thankful for you to be here. In 1 Corinthians 10, it says this, scripture, the scripture says all things that happened to Israel were for an example to us. So 
it happened to them, but it's also to teach us, right? That's what, that's why we're doing this. The Passover is a picture of being born again by the blood of the lamb through the waters of baptism. We commemorate not only the story of the liberation and deliverance from Egypt and the preservation from the angel of death, but also our own liberation from sin and death by the sacrifice of the Passover lamb offered in our place. When we examine and observe the Passover feast, we better understand what happened that night at the Last Supper or in the upper room. It was during the Seder that a a specific cup of wine and a specific piece of unleavened bread was made into a memorial to Yeshua. Yeshua took the cup and he said this, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. I want to also emphasize that we remember this. A lot of times we take communion at church, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, weekly in certain churches and communities. But Yeshua was talking about a very specific piece of bread and a very specific cup. And I want to explore that with you tonight. And we'll continue with that. For this reason and others, it is important for us to understand what goes on at Passover each year and impress it upon our children. Searching for leaven. The searching for leaven, yeast, is to be completed before the Passover meal. Uh, Many of our Jewish brothers and sisters know this to be one of the most stressful times of year. They go throughout their house. They're cleaning their house. They're cleaning their ovens. We're cleaning behind the fridge, behind the oven. We're we're doing spring cleaning. Um, It's pretty amazing, but also very stressful. Uh, But there's there's a reason for it. The evening before the first day of Passover, the head of the household, makes a final preparation for Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread by searching for leaven throughout the house. It is customary to place a few pieces of bread in various places so that when the search is made, leaven is found. So uh, a holly with the kids, we will take all of the leaven out of our house, but we'll leave a little bit and we'll actually do this. It's really fun. The kids like it. Uh, we, we, we have a flashlight, a feather, and, and different elements, but we'll talk about that too. <laughs> so in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 and 8, clean out the old leaven that you might be a new lump, just as you are in fact unleavened. The Messiah Yeshua, our Passover, also has been sacrificed. Let us therefore celebrate the feast, not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty eight: A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of this cup. We are instructed to make a search within our own hearts to see if there is any leaven or sin within us. As each of us comes to this Seder, let us examine ourselves and prepare our hearts before God. To have no offense toward God or man, let us pause for just a minute and examine ourselves for leaven so that whatever impurity that can be found can be swept up and removed out of our hearts as we apply the blood of the lamb. And I would say we should bow our heads and do, you know, something in your heart. And if you have to, uh, you know, confess those things to Hashem. So I will take take a minute. We do encourage you to reach out to GLC. We want to pray with you, and we want to be here to support you as well. So now we're going to start the feast. Again, this is like Shabbat. Uh, uh, We were going to set this part, this time apart, by lighting candles 
And this is all symbolic of setting this part a day from all other days. Holly, would you uh, kindle the festival lights? When the, when the plague of darkness struck the Egyptians, there was still light in the homes of the children of Israel. Yeshua, our Messiah, calls us to be a light to the world, even in the midst of darkness, the darkness that is around us. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The woman of the house traditionally at this point will take and light this, the candles. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher kitshanu b'mitvotav Betivanu lehalikner Shel Shabbat Amen Oh, man. This is, uh, thank you, Holly. That's beautiful. Um, if, if you don't, uh, if you don't uh, set, set the Sabbath apart or celebrate the Moedim, I hope that you're start, starting to see what, how special some of this time is. Uh, it really is a time that we get to be as family, be with friends, uh, and it, it, you feel the, the Lord's presence when, when, the mother of the home lights the candles. If you're not doing this, I really would encourage you to begin adopting some of these things into your life. I, I feel like it can, it's a big game changer, and it was for us. Uh, so we're going to drink four cups of, uh, of wine traditionally. Uh, today, we're, we're, we're drinking uh, juice. And, and so one of the things to um, remember, it, when you pour this cup, you are supposed to pour as much as you're going to drink for the first cup. We don't pour one cup and sip it four times. That's actually not the correct way to do it. We're going to pour as much as we're going to drink for the first cup. So be careful. Uh, if you're drinking wine, don't, don't pour too big of a glass because we need to finish that glass before we get to glass number two, glass number three, and we're going to finish with glass number four. So um, uh, pour, pour lightly, be responsible. That's all we're going to say. <laughs> then the Lord said to Moses, now you will see what I will do. That's in Exodus 6, verse 1. As the Lord spoke these words of encouragement to Moses, he revealed to his servant the plan which he would redeem the children of Israel. So we will all recite this part together. I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will free you from being slaves. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. I will take you as my own people, and I will be your God. At Passover, we celebrate these promises of redemption and relationship by drinking from our cups four times. With each cup, let us remember the union that God desires with us. So the first cup, we're going to fill it up, and this is called the cup of sanctification. I am Adonai, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, Exodus 6.6 6 says. The first cup of the four marks Israel as God's chosen people from whom he will bring deliverance from under the burden of slavery, freeing them to worship and serve him in spirit and truth. This is the same work he does to each and every one of his children. He brings into his family. He chooses them out of his own so sovereign will and frees them from the shackles of slavery. Did he not do that for us? This, uh, this is the will of Hashem. 
This freedom is for one purpose, to serve him as he intends. It is the calling of each and every child of God to be sanctified, set apart unto himself, and to be given over to his service and his service alone. The first cup of the Seder, the cup of sanctification or separation, reminds us of this critical and crucial starting point of our salvation. In 1 Peter verses 2, 9 through 10, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in times past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not been obtained by mercy, but now have been obtained by mercy. So we all filled our cup, and now we're all going to lift it up, and we're going to say a prayer, the prayer, and I'll say it in Hebrew, and then we'll re- we can repeat it in English. It's this. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Peri HaGefen, Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Amen. And now we may all drink the cup of sanctification. All right, that's the first cup. I hope y'all enjoyed. And I hope you got enough to drink. Now, I'm going to show you the washing of the hands. It's a symbolic act of purification. The scriptures say this in the Psalms, who may ascend the hill of God and who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to falsehood and has not sworn deceitfully. Okay, so now I'm going to grab, let's see, can we move this over? I'm going to grab the hand washing so we can see what that looks like. So this is a tradi- traditional uh, washing bucket. It's got two hands on, two handles on it. In fact, actually, you can buy these on GLC's uh, website if you don't have one. If you want to incorporate the the traditional hand washing. So the prayer goes like this: Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Kitshanu B'Mitzvotah V'Tzivanu Anatilat Yadaim, and we would take three pours over one hand, and do it again over the the next. It's important that we actually pour out all the fluid that's in the cup. The dipping of parsley, symbolic of new life and freedom we have when we come out of slavery of sin. The parsley is going to be dipped twice into salt water as a remembrance of our former tears of suffering while we were in Egypt. It reminds us of how God led us by dry land through the salt waters of the Red Sea and caused the waters to come over Pharaoh's chariots. The green plant also reminds us of Egypt or Israel, the planting of Adonai, says Isaiah 61, three. The parsley is also symbolic of hyssop, which is associated in the scriptures with cleansing and purification. In Psalms 51, verse seven, it says this, purify me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. So now everybody will take the parsley on their plates. We will put it in one hand and dip it into the salt water with the other. 
you can go ahead and dip it now in your salt water. And it says, and I will say the prayer. We'll say this prayer together. Blessed are you, O Adonai, our Elohim, King of the universe, who creator of the fruit of the earth. Now dip it twice and we eat it. Okay, here we go. Again, this is all an object lesson, everyone. Mm-hmm. This, isn't, uh, this isn't the only part of the meal, but this is the object lesson we're having. This is to remind us of slavery. Mm-hmm. How'd that taste, guys? <laughs> yeah, it's not that good, right? <laughs> it's not that good. It's not supposed to be yummy. Sad. Now, the next part. We're going to be breaking matzah. I'm going to show you something. This is really cool. Um, We take three pieces of matzah wrapped in a white covering. The name of this white covering is called the matzotash. Here. Ours is a lovely linen bag. And um, it it has the Hebrew word chai on it. If you don't have a matzotash bag, it's okay. Grab a napkin and wrap some matzah in it. Um, there are three matzahs placed inside this white covering. The three compartments that inside represent many different things. In fact, actually, the, the, the traditions say it can represent Abraham. This one has, uh, I'm going to see if we can get a shot of this. Um, I got it. There's three different compartments inside the bag. I don't know if you can see that. (laughs) I'm not doing a good job of sharing that. Here we go. And inside each one of these compartments is a full matzo cracker. So uh, for some, they say the three compartments could can be Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Some say it can be the, the father, son, and the Holy Spirit. Either one. Uh, the center one is is kind of the one that we call is going to be taken out and called the afikomen. But let me, I want to read Deuteronomy verse 6, chapter 6, verse 4. Hear, O Israel, Adonai or Elohim, Adonai is one, echad. The middle matzah is removed and broken. One half is called the afikomen and the one that would should come forth later on. This beautifully represents Yeshua, who was broken, buried, and brought back to redeem us from our sin. Just as the afikomen is wrapped in linen and hidden, so also was Yeshua's body. It was wrapped in linen and hidden in a tomb. The afikomen is unleavened. It's actually striped and pierced, just as Yeshua was, unleavened, sinless, striped when he was beaten with the cat of nine tails and pierced with nails in his hands and his feet and a spear in his side. The prophet Isaiah also said, with his stripes, we are healed. He was pierced for our transgressions and he was crushed for our iniquities. Isaiah 53 verse five. At the future time, when we call for the Ophicomen to come forth to be our dessert, the best part of our Seder meal, But for now, I'm going to take and remove the middle one. And then I'm going to ask the children to close their eyes and we're going to hide the afikomen. So we're take the middle one out. And even if this one, actually the middle one, if if it represented Isaac, which we know from the story of the Kedah, the binding of Isaac, that is a very rich messianic picture as well. So we see that the middle one is often associated with Messiah. Okay, everybody, kids, you're going to have to close your eyes, okay? And we're going to hide this. Close your eyes. And I'm going to go off camera for just one second. Stay there. Okay, you can open your eyes now. (laughs) All right. 
So we'll call forth for the afikomen to come forth later on in the meal. So, but for right now, we're going to go through the rest of the items on our Seder plate. And we're going to learn the object lessons here. So now let's take a piece of matzah. And in case you don't know, a piece of matzah, this, you can go to the supermarket, buy matzah. This is an unleavened piece of bread. So let's say the blessing over the bread. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam hamotze lechem min haaretz. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the bread from the earth, who has sanctified us by his commandments and commanded us to eat unleavened bread. Amen. So we may all eat Amen. one piece of matzah. Yes, we do this every year. <laughs> okay. The bitter herbs, the maror. The maror is the bitter herbs or a symbol of slavery. As they, the Egyptians, were grieved because of the children of Israel, and the Egyptians made the children of Israel serve with rigor, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, in mortar and in brick, in all manners of service of the field, says Exodus chapter 1, verses 12 through 14. The bitterness of herbs also reminds us of the discomfort of sin and how the slavery of sin leads to death. Therefore, we are reminded of the need for a redeemer, one who will purchase us out of the slavery of sin. We now take a piece of matzah with the bitter herbs. We always get the hard, the horseradish, and get like the hottest one you can get. The hotter, the better. And so I would caution you, kids, take as much as you want, take as little as you want. Oh, having a little bit on there and kind of getting that sting is kind of the point here. So let's take a piece of matzah and the bitter herbs together as a group. Here we go, everybody. Okay, we ask, uh, we, oh, sorry. The Messiah Yeshua, when he was sitting at the Last Supper, it is often thought that during this dipping is when he announced his betrayal. When asked by those closest to him, he said the betrayer would dip with him. As we eat this bitter herbs, we are reminded of the bitterness of slavery and also betrayal. So, blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with your commandments and commanded us to eat bitter herbs. So now we will all eat one piece of matzah. Zoom in on the faces. Did it get you? Oh, yeah. Did it get you? Oh. Oh, yeah. Whoa. That's the best part. Oh. Okay. We have just eaten the matzah and the maror separately. <clears throat> but this time, let us also add some of the haroset. Haroset is a sweet apple and honey, nut, and wine mixture representing the mortar and the straw used to make bricks that the Israelites built Pharaoh's cities with. So this time we're going to take a piece of matzah, the maror, and the haroset, the sweet apple mixture, all together, three, all three together. <laughs> okay, so we can lift it up and we all eat it together. We all eat the bitter herbs and herosa to remind ourselves that even the most bitter of circumstances can be sweetened by the hope we have in God. How was it that time? Better. Okay. 
a little bit easier. Just drink. You know, in life, we can have some really bad circumstances. But when we have hope in God and God is with us, it always sweetens it. The shank bone, we have the, the lamb shank bone here. The blood, the blood will be a sign for you on the house where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, Exodus 12, 13. The zaroa or shank bone of the lamb represents the lamb that was slain. As the blood of the lamb covered and protected the children of Israel, the blood of Yeshua, the lamb of Elohim, slain for the world, covers us as we are passed from death unto life. And before we start our reading, I just wanted to show everybody this. It's kind of our thing at our home, and you can do this too at back home. We take a, a red sash like this one. This one's a red linen sash. We'll actually hang it over the doorpost of our home, our front door. And it's again, it's just a symbol of it. Uh, we're not asking you to go uh, do anything extreme and paint your doorpost of your house, but it's fun. These are the elements that we are re that remind the kids of what happened. You know, at the first Passover in Egypt, they took a lamb, they slain it, they painted over the doorpost of their home. So this is one fun tradition that you could do. And now we're going to continue with our reading. Uh, uh, of our story here. So, Reader One, would you mind mm -hmm. beginning us? On the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. The animals you choose must be year old males without defect. Take care of them until the fourteenth day of the month, when all of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. Exodus 12, 3 and 5 through 7. Reader 2. Chesed 9. They are to eat the meat roasted over the fire along with the bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. This is how you are to eat it with your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. Exodus 12, 8, 11, and 13. And you shall observe this event as an ordinance for you and your children forever. When you enter the land, which Adonai will give you, as he has promised, you shall observe this rite. And when your children say to you, what does this rite mean to you? You shall say, it is a Passover sacrifice to Adonai, who passed over the houses of the sons of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians, but spared our homes. And the people bowed their heads and worshipped. Exodus 12, 24 through 27. <clears throat> the story of Passover. Our story begins with a man named Joseph. He was the son of Jacob and had 11 brothers. Because of their envy, Joseph was sold into slavery and taken to Egypt. While in Egypt, Hashem prospered Joseph to become the head of Potiphar's house, chief of Pharaoh's guard. But Joseph was falsely accused and soon placed in prison. While in prison, Joseph interpreted the dreams of Pharaoh's cupbearer and baker. Each man's dream happened just as Joseph had said. Then Pharaoh had a dream. Pharaoh sought the understanding of the dream from all the wise men of Egypt, but no one could interpret it. Finally, Joseph was brought forth and interpreted Pharaoh's dream, saying, There shall be seven years of plenty, followed by seven years of famine. Pharaoh should appoint a man with honesty and integrity to oversee the gathering of grain and its latter disbursement. 
Pharaoh saw that the Holy Spirit was with Joseph, and he appointed him to the position. Only Pharaoh himself was over him. Joseph was now the Mm -hmm. viceroy of Egypt. The famine began as Joseph had said, and his brethren, the sons of Jacob, came to buy grain and food. After a time of reconciliation and restoration, Jacob, his wives, his sons, and their wives moved to the best land of Egypt to be preserved by Joseph. Whereas Joseph's brethren meant evil, Hashem intended to prosper for himself a people. Seventy persons came down into Egypt, and they began to prosper. Generations passed, and a different Pharaoh rose up. The Pharaoh did not remember Joseph and feared the children of Israel because they had grown into a great company. He instructed his taskmasters to put the children of Israel under hard bondage, making bricks to build cities. He also instructed the midwives to kill the male children of Israel. A certain male child was born to Amran and Yocheved of the Levite tribe. To preserve the child's life, he was placed in an ark and floated on the Nile River. The daughter of Pharaoh found the ark and the child. Taking the child for herself, she called him Moses, for she had drawn him from the waters. Moses grew in stature to manhood. Because he killed an Egyptian who was hurting another Hebrew, he fled to the land of Midian. While in Midian, Moses became a shepherd and married the daughter of Jethro, a priest of Midian. Then one day, Moses saw a bush that was burning and was not consumed. He went up to the the mountain to see this wonder. And there he heard the voice of Hashem call to him. I am the leader. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face and was afraid. I have surely seen the afflictions of my people who are in Egypt and have given heed to their cry because of their taskmasters. For I am aware of their suffering, so I have come down to deliver them from the power of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a good and spacious land, to a land flowing with milk and honey. Therefore, come now, and I will send you to Pharaoh, so that you might bring my people, the sons of Israel, out of Egypt. Now Moses said, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, and that I should bring the sons of Israel out of Egypt? Hashem assured Moses that he would be with him, giving him signs and instructions to bring the children of Israel to this mountain. Now Moses said to Hashem, Behold, I am going to the sons of Israel, and I shall say to them that the God of your fathers has sent me to you. Now they may say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? I am who I am. Thus you shall say, I am has sent me. And you shall also say, Hashem, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has appeared to me saying that I indeed am concerned about what has happened in Egypt and that I will bring you up out of Egypt to a good land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Now Moses and his brother Aaron went in before Pharaoh and said, The God of the Hebrews, Adonai, says to let my people go. But Pharaoh resisted and said that he did not know Adonai and he would not let the people go. Pharaoh instructed the children of Israel to make bricks without straw and not let their tally of bricks be any less. Moses and Aaron went in again to Pharaoh announcing God's punishment upon Egypt saying that you, Pharaoh, might know Adonai. As the plagues became more severe, Pharaoh continued to harden his heart against Adonai. Finally, the tenth plague came. Moses instructed the sons of Israel to get a yearling lamb without spot or blemish. On the eve of the 14th of Aviv, the lamb was slain, and the blood was put on the doorposts and the lintel of their houses. On that night, they ate lamb, 
roasted by fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They ate with their clothes and sandals on, their loins girded and staff in hand, for they were prepared to leave. Then the angel of Adonai passed through the land of Egypt that night, and the firstborn of Egypt in every house died. Only those houses that had the blood of the lamb were passed over. Even the firstborn of Pharaoh's house suffered the death of the firstborn. Pharaoh and the Egyptians forced the children of Israel to leave, giving them silver and gold and silver. Thus Israel plundered the whole house of Egypt. Moses led the nation of Israel out of Egypt with their children and their flocks and plunder of Egypt. They continued eating the unleavened bread for seven days and journeyed to the Red Sea. Now Pharaoh and the Egyptians had a change of heart and said, What is this thing we have done, letting the sons of Israel go? Pharaoh assembled his choice chariots and pursued them to the Red Sea. There the children of Israel called out to Moses. But Moses said, Stand still and see the salvation, Yeshua of Elohim. With the blast of Elohim's nostril, he parted the sea and Israel walked across on dry land. As the Egyptians tried to follow, Elohim closed the waters and drowned all of the Egyptians. Thus, Israel was saved. And Moshe sang a new song to Adonai, saying, The horse and rider were thrown into the sea. Amen. It's a great song. This mighty deliverance represents a new life. This is the beginning of the season of springtime when new growth, life, and freedom awaits the redeemed. And now we're going into the traditional part of the four questions. We'll ask the kids if they will read the four questions, please. Why is this night different from all other nights? On all other nights, we may eat leavened or unleavened bread, but on this night, why do we eat only unleavened bread? On all other nights, we eat all types of herbs, but on this night, why do we eat only bitter herbs? On all other nights, we do not eat. We do not even dip once. But on this night, why do we dip twice? On all other nights, we eat our meal sitting. But on this night, why do we eat only reclining? Fine. And is it traditional for the man of the house to answer? This night is different from all other nights because it is. God's Passover. On this night, our ancestors sat in their houses with the blood of the lamb on the doorposts and lintels. The angel of the Lord passed over our houses and spared the firstborn of Israel. But the Egyptians suffered a great judgment. On the next morning, we left Egypt as free people. We eat unleavened bread because there, there was not enough time for the bread to rise. It is the bread of haste. We eat bitter herbs to remind us of the bitter bondage we suffered under the hands of the Egyptian taskmasters. We dip twice to remind us of how we were born of tears and of our crossing of the Red Sea to salvation. We recline and relax to enjoy our freedom, which Hashem gave us. The second cup. <clears throat> now, I am the Lord. I will deliver the, you from their bondage, says Exodus 6.6. 6. We will all fill our cups again, the cup of deliverance. So in this one, this is a fun, ex, ex, fun exercise. This is the, the cup of deliverance. We take no joy in seeing the judgments of Elohim upon, upon mankind. It would be our desire to see all men receive his salvation. However, when men harden their hearts against God, he is not mocked. He does not. 
he does, nor does man prevail when they mock God. As we are reminded of those great judgments upon the gods of Egypt, let us diminish the joy of our cup by dipping and removing a drop for each punishment. Ten drops. Um, so what we do traditionally is we'll take a napkin and we will actually dip our finger into our cup, this particular cup, and we're going to diminish our cup by taking one drop for every one of the plagues and placing it on our napkin, okay? And I will, I will do this, um, and we can all say together as we go through the plagues. Thus says Adonai, in this you shall know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will strike the rod that is in my hand on the waters which are in the, which are in the river, and they shall turn to blood, blood, blood. blood. The, the, the magicians of Egypt did in like manner with their enchantments, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he did not listen to them as Adonai had spoken. Pharaoh turned and went into his house, Neither did they lay even this to his heart. So in plague two, then God said to Moses, go to Pharaoh and say to him, thus says Adonai, let my people go that they might serve me. But if you refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite your whole territory, territory with frogs, 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 frogs. frogs. But the Egyptians, the, the magicians of Egypt, did the same with their secret arts, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he did not listen. Then God said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your staff and strike the dust of the earth, that, I, that it might become lice throughout the land of Egypt. And he did so, and the dust of the earth became lice, lice, lice. 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 The Egyptians tried with their secret arts to bring forth lice, but they could not. Then the magicians of Pharaoh said, this is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart was hardened and did not listen. Adonai said to Pharaoh through Moses, let my people go that they might serve me. For if you do not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies, flies, flies. 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 Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he did not listen. Hashem said to Pharaoh through Moses, let my people go that they might serve me. For if you refuse to let them go and continue to hold them, behold, the hand of God will come with a severe pestilence, pestilence, pestilence. 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 Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he did not let the people go. Adonai said, take for yourselves handfuls of soot from a kiln and let Moses throw it, uh, throw it toward the sky in the sight of Pharaoh and it will become a fine dust over all the land of Egypt, and it will become boils, boils, boils. boils. Adonai hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not listen to them. God said to Pharaoh through Moses, let my people go that they might serve me. About this time tomorrow, I will send a very heavy hail. Such has not been seen in Egypt from this day and was found even until now. And God sent hail, 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 hail. hail. Yeah. Adonai hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not let the sons of Israel go. Adonai said to Pharaoh through Moses and Aaron, How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go that they might serve me. Tomorrow I will bring locust, locust, locust. locust. Adonai hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not let the sons of Israel go. Adonai said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sky that there might be darkness, even a darkness which may be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand to the sky and there was darkness, darkness, darkness. 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 Pharaoh's heart became hard and he did, was not willing to let them go. Then Pharaoh said to Moses, get away from me. Beware, do not see my face again. For in that day, you that the day that you see my face, you shall die. And Moses said, you are right. I shall never see your face again. The plague 10, Adonai said to Moses, one more plague I will bring on Pharaoh and on Egypt. After that, he will let you go. Now it came about that very night. Death, death of, of the, the firstborn. firstborn. Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron at night and said, rise up. 
Get out from among my people, both you and the sons of Israel, and go worship Adonai, as you have said. As we recount his signs and wonders, let us all be reminded of Adonai's awesome power and his willingness and ability to redeem. In every generation, is a man. it's a man's duty to regard himself as though he had personally come out of Egypt. As it is written, you shall tell your sons, on that day, saying, it is because of what Adonai did for me when I came out of Egypt. Amen. We will all take the cup, and I'll say the prayer. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, borei peri hagefen, amen. And we may all drink the cup of deliverance. Oh, man, I hope you're enjoying yourself so far. Now, this is a tradition. It's called, this song is called Dayenu. Dayenu, actually, this is this responsive. It actually means it would have been enough. How great is Adonai? How great is his goodness to us? For each of his acts of mercy and kindness, we declare Dayenu, which means it would have been enough. So let's all say Dayenu. Had he brought us out of Egypt and not executed judgments against the Egyptians, it would have been enough. Dayenu. Had he executed judgments against the Egyptians and not their gods, it would have been enough. Dayenu. Had he executed judgments against their gods and not put to death their firstborn, it would have been enough. Dayenu. Had he sunk our foes in it and not satisfied our needs in the desert for 40 years, it would have been enough. Dayenu. Had he satisfied our needs in the desert for 40 years and not fed us the manna, it would have been enough. Dayenu. Had he fed us the manna and not given us the Sabbath, it would have been enough. Dayenu. Had he given us the Sabbath and not brought us to Mount Sinai, it would have been enough. Dayenu. Had he brought us to Mount Sinai and not given us the Torah, it would have been enough. Dayenu. Had he given us the Torah and not brought us into Israel, it would have been enough. How much more so, then, should we be grateful to Hashem for the numerous favors that He has bestowed upon us? He brought us out of Egypt and punished the Egyptians. He smote their gods and slew their firstborn. He gave us their wealth and split the sea for us. He led us through it on dry land and sank our foes in it. He sustained us in the desert for 40 years, and He fed us with manna. He gave us the Sabbath and brought us to Mount Sinai. He gave us the Torah and brought us to Israel. He gave us his son to redeem us from death. He raised him again and atoned for all our sins. In Messiah Yeshua, he gives abundance. In Yeshua, eternal life. Amen. Amen. Now, this is the cup of Eliyahu, the cup of Elijah. It is customary to set a place to fill a cup for the prophet Elijah in the expectation that he will appear some year at the time of Passover. It will be, it will be the appearance of the witness of Elijah that will herald in the return of the Messiah. Typically, when we're sitting in our home, we're sitting on, on this stage right now, we would ask one of the children to go check the front door and see if Elijah has come back. We will all say this together. I will we'll send, send you the, the prophet Elijah, Elijah before, before the great and dreadful day of Adonai. Adonai. He, he will turn, turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. That's in Malachi. So at this point, it is traditional to actually stop the Seder meal. And then we kind of put, put the liturgy down or the, 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 the Haggadah, the Seder down. And we would enjoy our fellowship meal together. Uh, if you're watching this and streaming this on YouTube, please hit pause and come back when you guys are done eating. But for now, we're going to continue with the tradition of the Seder, the next part. The Passover is observed on the eve of the 14th day of Nisan. Then beginning with the 15th, the children of Israel are to eat only unleavened bread, for seven days and keeping the Feast of Unleavened Bread. However, there is another feast observed during this weekly Sabbath, 
following the Passover is the Feast of First Fruits. In the temple, the priests would have new sheaves of barley before Adonai, thanking him for the resurrection of life. Earlier, seeds were buried in the ground, having received the waters of salvation. These dead seeds came to life, sprouting forth a new plant. These young plants were gathered and waved before God. It was on this day that Yeshua came forth from the grave, was seen first by women and then by his disciples. In the prophetic act of this resurrection, we call for the Afikomen to come forth from this from its grave to be the best part of our Passover dinner. So we will all say, Afikomen, come, come forth. forth. All right. This is the part where the child is dispatched to find the Afikomen. The Afikomen is found after a ransom is paid for it. A symbol of our Messiah buying us back from slavery to the world. It is at this time that Yeshua took bread, this piece of bread, and he said, This is my body, broken for you. Eat it as often as you do in remembrance of me. It is also said that this piece of bread is the word of God. When we eat it, we place the word of God and his commandments in our mouth. The word is nigh you, even in your mouth, says Romans 10, 8. We are warned in the Torah and also in the Brit Hadashah not to eat this bread with an unworthy manner. If you are at odds with any man or God, you are not to eat this bread. It is reserved only for people with a circumcised and clean heart before God. Let us obey the Passover commandments and remembrance as we take this piece of bread. So, uh, we all recite, actually, let's bring it over, the bread. You can bring it over, son. You found it, the afikomen. So it's traditional as you hide this, to try to make this part of the story more remember, like to, for our kids to remember it, we often hide this either with money or we give a ransom for it. So uh, as you go out to find it, I want to say this is for you this gift and you can hide it with sweets you can hide it with cash you can hide it with all different things this is actually with my home is probably the most exciting part also the most controversial part kids always are like hey why didn't i find anything i want a prize i tried to find it but we also give a gift to all the children who went out and sought to seek it too because it says if you seek you shall find if you go out and you're trying to seek the Lord, he will be faithful and always meet you where you're at. So we say together, oh, actually, we already did that part. Let's, let's actually say the blessing over the Afikomen. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, amose lachem in haaretz. Amen. All right. Now take a piece of this bread. This is the bread. And we distribute that. So let's eat this in remembering his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Amen. This is the third cup. We will all say this together if we can. We're all chewing the, our, with our dry cracker. <laughs> I am Adonai, and I will also redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgment. Let us fill our cup for the third time this evening. Thank you. So this is the cup of redemption, symbolizing the blood of the Passover lamb. It was the cup after supper with which Messiah identified himself. I will redeem, redeem you with, with an, an outstretched, outstretched arm. arm. The prophet Isaiah reminds us, 
Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, Isaiah 59. It is our own right, it is our own righteousness that falls short. Though the Lord searched, he could find no one to intercede. So his own arm worked salvation for him, and his own righteousness sustained him. Yeshua the Messiah lifted the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which he poured out for you, which I poured out for you. Just as the blood of the Lamb brought salvation in Egypt, so Messiah's atoning death can bring salvation to all who believe. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Borei peri hagefen Amen We may all drink the cup of redemption. With true freedom comes life. God does not just redeem. He gives life. God heard the cry of his people. He redeemed them and moved on their behalf. Once they were free to serve him, God betrothed his people Israel and gave them the words of Torah, which is life. You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now then, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be my own possession among all the peoples from all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the sons of Israel. Then Hashem said all these words, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. All. All you are to have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol or any likeness of what is in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. You shall not worship them or serve them, for I, Adonai your God, I am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children, on the third and fourth generations of those who hate me but showing loving kindness to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. You, you shall, shall not, not take, take the, the name, name of Adonai, Adonai in, in vain. vain. For Adonai will not leave him unpunished who takes his name in vain. Let the name of Elohim be blessed forever and ever, for wisdom and power belongs to him. Remember, Remember the, the Sabbath, Sabbath day, day to, to keep, keep it, it holy. holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of Hashem. In it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male servant or your female servant or your ox or your donkey or any of your cattle or your sojourner who stays with you, so that your male servant and your female servant may rest as well as you. You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and Hashem brought you out of there by a mighty hand and by an outstretched arm. Therefore, God commanded you to observe the seventh day. Honor, Honor your, your father, father and mother, mother that, that your, your days, days may be prolonged, prolonged in the land which, which Adonai, Adonai gives, gives you. you. Hear, my son, your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Indeed, they are a graceful wreath to your head and ornaments about your neck. You, you shall, shall not murder. murder. Whoever sheds man's blood, by man his blood shall be shed. For in the image of God he made man. You shall, shall not, not commit, commit adultery. adultery. For this is the will of God, sanctification, for your sanctification, that is that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in lustful passion like the Gentiles who do not know Hashem. You shall, you shall not, not steal. steal. He who steals must steal no longer, but rather he must labor, performing with his own hands what is good, so that he will have something to share with one who has need. You shall, shall not, not bear, bear false witness, witness against, against your neighbor. 
There are six things which Adonai hates, yes, seven, which are an abomination to him, haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that run rapidly to evil, a false witness who utters lies, and one who spreads strife among brothers. You shall not cover your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or anything that belongs to your neighbor. But each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. Then when lust has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is accomplished, it brings forth death. Elohim separated Israel from the burdens of the Egyptians. His purpose in doing so was that Israel might worship him unfettered. Each time the famous line is spoken, let my people go, it was followed with, so that they, they might serve me. For the grace of Elohim has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great Elohim, Savior, Messiah, Yeshua, who gave himself for us to redeem us from every lawless deed and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, zealous for good deeds, These things speak and exhort and reprove with all authority. Let no one disregard you. The fourth cup. The fourth cup is known as the cup of praise. I will take you as my own people and I will be your God, says Exodus 6, verse 7. Let us fill the cup of praise. Let us fill our cups for the fourth and last time and give thanks to God, our great Redeemer. This is Psalm 118. It will be a responsive prayer. Give thanks to Adonai, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to Elohim, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to he who does great wonders. His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to he who formed the sun, the moon, and the stars. His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to he who spread out the earth over the waters. His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to he who made man after his own image and breathed life into him. His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to he who delivers his people out of the hands of the Egyptians. His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to he who has made a covenant with our fathers and has given us Torah, the instructions for righteousness. His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to he who gives us bread from heaven and water from the rock, and that rock was Messiah. His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to he who forgives our sins and makes sacrifice for us. His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to he who sent his only son to be our redeemer, our deliverer, and our salvation. His mercy endures forever. For great is his loving kindness and his His mercy mercy endures endures forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Now we will say the blessing over the fourth cup. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Borei peri hagefen Amen We all drink the cup of praise. Praise the Lord. Oh, man. I would say in the traditional uh, supper, known as the Last Supper, but of course it was a Passover, that last cup that we just drank, Mm -hmm. that was the cup that Yeshua said he will not drink of it until he's again in the kingdom with us. So the question is, is why didn't he drink it? Well, we know how the rest of the story goes. You know, that night he, uh, he prayed. 
and he knew the judgment that was going to come upon him. He knew uh, the heaviness of, of that. Of course he was tempted. He was tempted in all ways. Please, Father, if there's any other way, let this, be the, let, let this go past, right? But in his pain and in his obedience to the Father, knowing that it was the plan from the foundation of all the world, this wasn't a plan B or an accidental thing. He was slain from the foundation, and this was his plan from the beginning. So he says he's not going to drink of that cup until we are all again with him in the, in, in the, in the kingdom. And I think how beautiful that is. There is one day we're going to celebrate this meal again every year in the millennial kingdom. How many years is the millennial kingdom? A thousand. A thousand years. So how many times will we be celebrating this Passover with him? Once a year, I'm assuming, for a thousand times with Mashiach. And it's all to teach us something. And I'm sure every year he's going to reveal more. But I want you to take away from this beautiful meal that we just took, how Yeshua-centric, how cent centered on Messiah is this meal. Um, it wasn't just the last Passover. It wasn't the last meal where he ate one last time with his friends, although it was. And he was saying goodbye for a short time. But he is teaching about who he was, who were the first people for 2,000 years before Yeshua came and fulfilled the Passover. Israel was keeping the Passover, and they were seeing and doing all these things. How beautiful is that? Um, and it was all to point towards him on the very day he would come and he would die uh, for our sins and he would resurrect. How amazing is that? So I want to say with one la our, our, our last thing, even though God made Terry, allow us to enter this new year, this time of new life, new growth, and new beginning of your redemptive cycle. May this year for each and every one of us be one of growth, prosperity, and health. In the name and the merit of Yeshua. For all of you who are joining us and who have, may have never seen this before, may God bring you more blessings this year. May you search out the secret things in his Torah. It is for kings to do such thing. And we are a kingdom of priests. And we are called to be holy and set apart. I hope this year that he pours out more of his spirit and more of his blessing upon you. And if you enjoyed this, please share it with your friends and ask maybe next year. You can do this with one of the, your friends and your community. Maybe your church would like to do something like this and you need a little bit of guidance. Take this. Take the, take the Haggadah that we've put together. Feel free to edit it. Reach out to us if you wanted a version that you can get and edit we would be happy to share that with you. If your church would like somebody to come and host uh, or help you to learn how to do this as a community, reach out to us. We'd love to be a part of that. GLC is about equipping the saints. And we are so thankful that you took time to invite us to your table and that you've uh, stayed and, and been a part of our family. Uh, if, you've, if you feel touched, please, we are a listener and viewer supported uh, channel, we are always happy and thankful for any love gift offerings that you give. And let's end this traditional meal with what we all say every year and everyone does all together. Next year in Yerushalayim. Shalom, everyone. Thank you. Introducing God's Learning Channel's brand new Amazon Bookstore, your gateway to a world of wisdom and faith. 
Our Amazon bookstore offers a remarkable collection of dozens of hand-picked items, carefully curated to enrich your spiritual journey. From a wide selection of traditional Christian and Jewish Bibles, to Judaica treasures, biblical holiday merchandise, and even beautiful jewelry, our Amazon bookstore has it all. Conveniently shop from the comfort of your own home at any time. Just visit our website or stop by our online bookstore. Or better yet, simply find us on Amazon to embark on a transformative shopping experience. New items are added regularly, so remember to always check back. Shop now and embrace the blessings that await you.